amazing to me why do we try to hide things from God when he knows anyway <laughs> that's what I said try. <laughs> it ain't gonna it ain't gonna be here at all <laughs> 
the worship was done in the cross, come to the light. So we need to stop trying to impress individuals. And but the Lord, the Lord knew their thoughts, the intent of their thoughts. So he posed them question. But what authority did you cast out? I'm talking about. See, if I feel and I defeated my purpose. So why don't go and destroy something that I already own? Huh? He can't gain souls by dividing himself. A house divided against itself cannot stand. There's always going to be turmoil. So what Jesus is saying, I, if I cast them out by the spirit of God, in the spirit of God, but by what spirit did you cast him out? He posed the question to him. He reversed his thing on them. Mm -hmm. We think we go how smart the Lord, he always knows. Yes. So he reversed this situation and he posed them a question. So by what power do you do the things that you do? Or is it just for self gain? Mm -hmm. To be popular? Or to say that I'm a good person? That I did good for somebody? Or what is it because God has been good to me? Now I will show mercy to my brothers. <laughs> By what reason do we do good to individuals? Of everybody, especially those which are of the household of faith. So, if I got to love everybody, that means that I got to love the ones that hate me, the ones that dislike me, the ones that misuse me, the ones that talk about me. I still got to love. Them. In spite of what they do to me, I still got to love those individuals, though. God is showing his power. He's demonstrating his power. He didn't have to do demonstrate it because he got all power. He got the whole world in his hand. The songwriter said, he got the little bitty children. <laughs> he got it all in his hand. Yeah. But when someone is threatened, that's See, they were threatened because they saw people were getting away from this going to see. Right. And now we're gonna want to throw this thing off. You going, this man is a devil. So why are you following this devil? He's casted out these demons by Bezalel, the prince of the devil. Now, what kind of reason is that? So Satan is working to defeat himself? But God is telling us that we, not, we shouldn't be judges of individuals. That's what he's saying. When, it, when someone do good, we should just take it as, as, as we see, as a good deed. Not because we're looking for something or asking for something, but because God has been good to me. He's blessed me, so I'm going to bless somebody else. <laughs> so he, we should share our blessings with others. That's what he's saying. As Christians, we need to share our blessings. And it, it may not be given, but it may be just a kind word, a smile. 
We don't know. But as we travel along this Christian journey, we're going to encounter many individuals. And I mean many. You're going to encounter all kind of. You know, when I was working, we used to have this thing before we went to work every morning. We would have a, a safety breathing. And before we had safety breathing, I would always offer prayer. You know, and I had one individual, one guy, he told me, he said, why are you always praying? <laughs> I said, because the Lord has been good to me. I said, he spared me. He woke me up this morning. He let me see another day. And I'm giving him thanks and glory for what he's already done and for what he's going to do. And asking him to watch over us as we go through the day. He said, well, I don't want to pray for it. And that's what he told me. And I told him, I said, well, you don't have to participate. You can step away, but we still going to pray. And, and, and this went on for a couple of months. And then one day he came to me. He said, really? I've been going through some things. He said, will you pray for me? <laughs> See, that's what prayer It changes that. You don't have to try to put, boast yourself or put yourself on nobody. Just keep on doing what thus said the Lord. And the Lord will work it out. Now, next outline is entitled The Kingdom of Deliverance and Deliverance. And when we deliver somebody, that means we set them free. And the Lord has delivered us. He set us free. He's given up a new look on life. He's given us life, but without him, we don't have no life. So, as individuals, we need to just the Bible asks us whether the Lord require of thee, O man. <laughs> to love mercy justice and to walk humbly before thy Lord. So if we look, do those things then we will be pleasing in the sight of the Lord. And this next outline reads but if I but if I cast out devils by the spirit of God then the kingdom of God has come unto you. How can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except first he bind the strong man, and then he spoil, he will spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with my me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but blasphemy, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So deliverance has come because of Jesus. And he, he went on to explain to them that, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, the kingdom of God, A tree is known by the fruit that it bears. Mm -hmm. See, who mm -hmm. But an apple tree is not going to bear pears no. or plums. Right. So, whatever you are, you should be producing fruit. Right. Fruits of the spirit, mm -hmm. love, joy, peace, long service. All these things, those are what we should be producing. Now, Satan is trying to tell you, trying to tell you that I'm the prince of that. 
I'm Bill. I got all the videos. You will show you this beautiful picture. You thank you, thank you. But Jesus is telling us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming unto the Father except by me. So if we want to be saved, then we got to have Jesus in our lives. We got to accept him as our personal Savior. We got to have an intimate relationship with him. Just like I have an intimate relationship with my wife. Intimate relationship with Jesus. I know him for myself. See, my daddy can't do but I got to know him for myself. I got to know he is my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer, my everything. He is everything. I got to know him. That's what he said. It goes on to give an example. If you want to go into a strong man's house, <laughs> how are you going to overtake this man unless you first get in there and tie him up? That's right. That's right. <laughs> you got to sneak up on him, ain't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus is telling you, I'm the strong man. That's right. I got all power. Amen. Yeah. See, no matter what you do against me, I'm still going to stand. All right. So that's what he's telling us. That God has all power. He sees all, he hears all, he knows all. And then it, it goes on to say, every man be, give, be forgiven man. Mm -hmm. So you can deny that Jesus is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. But you can ask for forgiveness. But when you say that they blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, you're just talking about there is no Holy Ghost, there is no Spirit of God, there is no Spirit, there is no power. That you're denying Christ's power. Amen. You're denying the power of God. Amen. So as Christians, we need to know we can be forgiven for all manner of sin. And we have already because Christ died on the, on the cross for all of our sins. Not just for one, but all. The perfect sacrifice. So he redeemed lost man that he paid that price. His precious blood. See, I have re been redeemed by the blood of Jesus and only by his blood. So he's telling us that as Christians, we should be thankful for what Christ did for us. And then we went away. And where I am, there you may be also. Man, just think about this. Where he's gone, I can go one day. If I live right, if I do right, if I accept him as my personal Savior. Now, now it ain't about living right. It's about knowing Christ. Amen. Now, if you don't, I don't care how many good deeds you do. If you don't know Jesus, then you're doomed for hell. Good. A good deed It's all about Jesus right. And think about this now Just a closer walk with him Every day of our lives We should be Putting off Putting on yeah. Putting off The things that's not like Christ in our lives. The things that is like him we should be becoming more Christ-like every day. In other words, we should be with Jesus here on this earth. We are to be the lights of the world. And he tells us to let your light to a time before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So the Lord can't be glorified without them. 
But what kind of life profess? Are you living in the things that Christ wants you to do or not? This lesson is telling us that God has all power. Not just some power, but every, every all power. And he's able to do anything. And I mean anything but say. <laughs> so we thank you for allowing me to say these few words on today's lesson. And we pray that you've gotten a thought. We're going to ask Pastor Jacobs. <laughs> Hey, good morning, church family. Demonstration of power. Beautiful lesson that we have. You were in Bible study not too long ago. We're in this scripture and in the next Sunday school lesson. So we ought to be well prepared for next week. Amen. But it's just a few things that we want to point out. Thank Deacon Turner for a beautiful uh, Sunday school lesson teaching. Um, the key. The thing that set this whole conversation off was that the people asked, is not this the son of David? Oh, that, that the Pharisees, they didn't want to hear that. Because in 24, it says when the Pharisees heard it, they didn't respond until the people said, this got to be the Messiah. And see, so they rejected Jesus as the Messiah. Jesus gave them so much evidence but because of the unbelief and the hardness of their heart, they could not receive Jesus as their Messiah. That sets this whole lesson off. Jesus, uh, we said this in, in the Bible study. He said, every king, I don't care if it's the church, I don't care if your job, I don't care if it's your house, Whatever arena you are in, in relationship with other people, if you are divided against one another, you cannot stand. And I'm telling you, the devil does not want to see the end of his kingdom. But he knows it's coming. But while he has time to roam the earth, he does not want to see the destruction of his kingdom. He don't want anybody to hinder his work just as well as the church doesn't want anybody to hinder our works. We, we, we sang it. You don't want to go. Amen. Don't hinder me. So Jesus said, why would the devil want to chop his own legs off? <laughs> so to the first outline, real quick, I just want to make this one statement. It is amazing how destructive pride is. Pride is so destructive. The Pharisees were so lifted up in pride. They loved themselves and they loved the praise of people so much that they rejected the truth of God in front of them. When you are lifted up in pride, you cannot be told anything. And you are unable to see the truth. So in our second outline, verse number 28 is what Reverend Marshall told us last week. The truth hurts. Because Jesus said, if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, here's the truth. Then the kingdom of God has come to you. Truth hurts, doesn't it, Reverend Marsh? He told him, the truth is in front of you, but because it comes against your pride, your ego is hurt. You don't want to accept that the kingdom of God has come to you. And they should have heard what Jesus said and celebrated because the, the, the one thing that the spiritual leaders should have wanted was to be close to God. And Jesus says, God is close to you right now, but you still reject him. Right here. Right here with him. But you still reject him. Truth hurts to those that don't believe. So, verse number 30 Jesus doesn't leave any gray area. He says, if you're with me, you're gathering. If you're not with me, you're scattering. And what does Jeremiah 23 and 1 say? God says, woe be unto the pastors of the shepherd that scatter the sheep of my pasture. So either you're with God or you're against God. You don't want to be found on the other side of that conversation. 
either we're unifying the body of Christ or you're sending people running away from the presence of God. And this is what the Pharisees were doing. Jesus warned about this. Jesus says that they are running people away from the Lord. So do what they say. Don't do what they do. Either you're with me or against me. Blasphemy, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Blasphemy simply means to curse or to speak evil of. That's why in verse 32, he says, whoever speaks against the Holy Ghost, it won't be forgiven. What Jesus is telling the Pharisees is you see my power, but yet you tell me that my power is evil, that I'm Beelzebub. If you speak against the power that you clearly see at work in front of you, you are blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. If you reject Jesus, you reject the power of Jesus, you reject the Holy Ghost, you reject salvation, you reject God. There's no way to be forgiven if you reject the only thing that can save you. Jesus said, if anybody tries another way, you're a thief and a robber. Ain't that what you said? God Almighty. <laughs> That's why the scripture says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. You know why the Bible calls him fool? Because he got everything that you need to see to know that there's a God. Romans 1 and 20 says that everything that is invisible about God, you can see visibly in creation. So if you look at creation, but you reject the creator, the Bible says you're a fool. It's ridiculous to have all this evidence and reject it. So Jesus says, you got all this evidence. You've been watching me heal, listening to me preach. And you still reject me. Thank you once again, Deacon Turner, for teaching us this morning. We thank you all for your participation and allowing me to say these few words. Powerful, powerful lesson that we ought to spend a little bit more time in. Amen. We're going to get ready to dismiss for afternoon worship service. Let's remember that God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth.
Hey ladies, y'all come on up, come on up. <laughs>
99 and a half won't do. Lord, try again. Trying to make a hundred. 99 and a half won't do. Won't do. When I started fighting on a battlefield for the Lord Because of my enemy, my way got hard Satan was trying with all of his might Trying to get me to give up the fight And like a good soldier, I had my hands on the plow No weapon formed against me, it's gonna prosper I needed God to refill my cup And this is what I did I went down to the fountain and my soul. I went way down to the fountain. I like the woman at the well. I was searching and searching, looking for something to satisfy. I went down to the altar. I stayed right there. I knew that the Lord would soon answer my prayer. And like a Jacob, I rest and rest for some more. I wouldn't let go until God blessed my soul. My feet got light. I began to run. I knew that my deliverance had come. I got happy all at the fountain in my soul. I got happy all at the fountain. I feel my cup, Lord. to say they've been down to the fountain and got what they needed. Amen. Amen. My soul got another deal. Amen. Amen. The hymn says, come to this fountain so rich and so sweet. Cast our poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
pray that we all rejoice in and are glad in it. Amen. Amen. So delighted to be in the house of the Lord one more time among the people of God. And amen. We thank God our ladies got us started off right. And amen. This fine choir, this award winning choir, amen. They're carrying on that spirit of praise and worship. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask Sister Ernestine Raglan to come forward with our announcements now. Church 
anniversary program has been finalized. The door is open. If anyone would like to participate by doing something of your choice to help make the program successful, please let me know no later than Tuesday, July 11th. I can be reached at 256 493 Thank you all for your help, and I believe that Sister Celeste will elaborate on this further, and other than Sister Celeste, are there any other announcements coming from the school? <laughs> Thank you. Sister Celeste and Sister Ernestine, and once again, good morning, church family. Amen. As we are preparing for our church anniversary, 
Uh, if you haven't seen it on the board already, I heard the announcement, Pastor Robert Duncan from Mountain Home Baptist Church in Sycamore. He's coming. Very familiar with Union Springs. He said that this is the first place that uh, he preached when he got called to preach. Pastor Turner was very instrumental in his ministry coming up. And, and, and we are delighted to have him and his church family to come and to celebrate with us. Uh, Reverend Thompson, he had been here in a while. He'll be here on that morning. Uh, now, before that day on Saturday, me and remember we discussed we want to come out. We want to have a clean up day. We're going to clean inside and outside on Saturday. You can be here at 8 o'clock a.m. on Saturday morning. Uh, we want to uh, go ahead and knock out what we got to do before it really gets hot. Amen. And I believe we can get it done in an hour or two if we have enough people to participate. Amen. Uh, to piggyback on the Congress of Christian Education, those who have the uh, ability to get online, you can look up Russian Springs District Association on Google. It'll take you straight to the website. And on the website, you'll see the announcement for Congress right there at the home page. And you're able to register online to keep some of that time that we spend so much when we get to the district doing registration when we get there and we can go ahead and get into classes and you're also letting the staff know how many people are going to be in their classes i'll be teaching an evening class uh, this year again on reaching generation z but they have something for everyone so if you're able to go uh, please uh, go and support we have a wonderful time down in our congress and if we need the van to go we'll have somebody Somebody be able to drive. If I got to drive it myself, we want to make sure you're able to get down there. Amen. Amen. And then lastly, uh, you may think your graduates have been overlooked, but they have not. We have not given our graduates uh, that little blessing that we usually do. So we need to make sure that you have all the names in. If they graduated whatever level that they graduated, need to go back and make sure we take care of our graduates. So. Uh, make sure you get us those names. We have uh, we have those who are over our youth departments. Deacon and Sister Hunter, uh, Deacon Jennings is over the Crusader. We got Sister Regina. We got, we got our deacons. We got myself. Make sure you get the names in so we can get it together and we can take care of your graduate. Amen. Amen. Now, I believe it's getting close to preaching time. And y'all know Reverend Marshall gonna say good morning. And we're going to get one more soul-stirring song from this award-winning choir. Amen. Amen. Let church say amen. 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 One more time. Amen. amen. The Lord been good to you. Come on, somebody don't sound like the Lord been good to you. I said, have the Lord been good to you? Amen. If you know from a shadow down that the Lord been good to you, you ought to give God a holy ghost, shout, soul, such and pray, because he's worthy to be prayed. Anybody in here ready to praise him? When the praise goes up, the blessing of God will surely come down. Oh, the Lord is good. Amen. Watch over you. Up and down that dangerous highway and byway. And you're going to sit like the Lord hasn't done you any good. I beg the difference. Amen. Come on, give him a wave off and right quick. Come on, give him. If you don't want to stand, give him a wave off. Amen. He's worthy. I said he's worthy. To be praised. Can I get somebody to say hallelujah? Come on, can I wake somebody up? Hallelujah. Oh, you think you're having a good time right now. But wait till you get up there. Oh, down here is just a rehearsal. But when I get to heaven, I'm going to shout glory all day long. Because I want to hear him call my name. I want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. 
stop and pay for all a few things, but come on up to pray, Gloria. I feel like you're crazy right now. See, I ain't got to wait till I get up there. I can praise her while I'm down here. Amen. I got a reason to praise the Lord. Because the Lord been good to all of us. We could have been dead sleeping in our grave. But look at the Lord. Look how good he is. He made death stand back and made death behave. Uh, let me go. I'm going to shout here. Amen. i like to introduce to some and present to others. The proud and humble pastor of the Union Spring Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Before you come, before the choir come, let us elevate our right hand and say, Pastor Jacob, preach the word. Pastor Jacob, preach, preach. Preach, 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 preach. Amen. As the choir come in their own way, in Nate's voice, after the choir, I give you our beloved pastor. I give you Pastor Jacob. How did I make it all these years? How did I make it this far? Through the valley and over the hill. I know it had to be God. How did I make it? Through the storm, how did I make it through the rain? If you want to know just how I got here, it's so easy to explain. It was God's grace, God's grace. God's grace. God's grace, God's grace, I made it this far, by the grace of God, it was God's grace, God's grace, God's grace, his amazing grace, I made it this far, by the grace of God. Lord, I thank you for how you brought me, yeah. How you brought me through the night. Lord, you kept me and you never left me. You stood by my side. There were so many times when I came so close. Oh, man, death. 
tried to take me in. But the reason I'm here is not hard for me to see. In fact, it's so easy to explain. It was God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. God's grace is amazing grace. I made it this far by the grace. I remember the time when I strayed away. Even though I knew your way, Lord, I still didn't obey. But God's mercy and his grace stayed by the grace of God. Anybody want to know just how I got here? Anybody want to know how I'm still standing? I made it this far by the grace Some folks say they said I wouldn't make it. Some folks said I wouldn't be here today. But I made it this far by the grace. When I sit down and look back down through the years, I had to share so many tears, but I made it this far by the grace. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Thank you right now, Lord. I made it this far by the grace. It was God's grace. Anybody know anything about God's grace? Amen. Amen. When you know who you are, you'll know something about grace. Amen. I know I wouldn't have made it except by God's grace. Hallelujah. Just the word of prayer. Most holy and righteous God, I thank you for who you are. And Lord, we thank you for your grace, for your mercy. Keeping us, Lord God. Father, you were there when we weren't even looking for you. Thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. Lord God, I pull on you again and ask you for your grace to perform this work this morning. Asking God that you would give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Preaching power. Let us preach a word with clarity, God. Father, give us all listening ears to hear what you have to say. And a willing heart to apply your word to our lives. Give me strength, God, to preach a word. In Jesus' name, pray. 
Amen. Amen. Giving honor to God, first and foremost, truly as the head of my life, my brother in the ministry, Rev. Marshall, Sister Marshall, my wife, to the Thompsons in their absence, to our officers, their wives, to this fine choir, Sister Jesse, all of you here, all of you outside on 87.9 and all of you online. Thank God for you this morning. Don't want to be before you long, just long enough. Want to invite you this morning. Start at Matthew and go back three books to Haggai. Haggai chapter number one. There's only two chapters in this book, I believe. <laughs> this message is short and simple. Hey, guy, chapter number one. You got technological devices. I know you're already there. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, once again, start at Matthew and go back three short books. You're running the hey, guy. But that's a man. Need me to wait? Just holler, wait. Amen. Beginning at verse number one, it reads, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? That's houses with rooftops, ceilings. And this house lie waste. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have so much, bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. He that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. I know about that. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Last verse, go up to the mountain, verse 8, and bring wood. Build the house. Now I will take pleasure in it. Now I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Thank you for honoring the word of God, whether you stand or sit. I want to prelude our church anniversary by telling us it's time to build God's house. It's time to build God's house. You might look around and say it's already built. That's not what I'm talking about. It's time to build God's house. During the time that Haggai prophesied to Zerubbabel and the people of Judah, God had blessed them with favor to rebuild the temple. Nehemiah had been commissioned to build the wall around Jerusalem, and he was given favor. So was Zerubbabel given favor to have the supplies and the support that he needed to build God's temple. However, in Ezra chapter number four, the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin, they pressed hard on the people, trying to get them to stop working. As a matter of fact, they came to Zerubbabel and they said, we want to help you out. And Zerubbabel said, we don't need your help. And so what they did is they went to the king and they said, these people in Judah, 
They are trying to rebel against you. They, they built up a wall. They built the temple and they're not going to pay your taxes. They're not going to honor you. They are going to wage war against you. And the king sent a letter that, that basically said that you need to stop building until I can investigate. So they stopped building. As time went on, the people stopped looking for permission to build the temple. They began to settle. And pretty soon after settling, they began to make excuses. My goodness. I was reading. There's a quote from Benjamin Franklin. And he said, anybody that's good at making excuses is not good at doing much else. It does. <laughs> this text gives us a historical account about a specific people at a specific place and at a specific time. However, since all scripture was breathed by God. Amen. To perfect us so that we may be thoroughly furnished. There's something for us to learn from this account. God's house is still here. And it may not be what you think it is. There is some major construction to be done in God's house. But like the Jews, there's a lot of settling. And there's a lot of excuses being tossed back and forth for why we are not building God's house. I want to learn a few things from the Jews in this text. First thing that I want to give you as I hurry on is that complacency breeds contempt. Complacency breeds Contempt, complacency is being satisfied with where you are with no intent to progress. In simple terms, you stuck where you are and you don't feel like you need to go anywhere else. I believe that a lot in the local churches today, we are stuck in a way and we refuse to see the road ahead of us and we're not progressing because we're satisfied. We're going through the motions. Contempt is a feeling that a person or a thing is beneath consideration, worthless, or deserving scorn. So when I say complacency breeds contempt, what I mean is that the Jews got to a place where they were satisfied with being stuck to the point where they didn't think they were stuck. They were satisfied and in their satisfaction, they didn't see a need to build God's temple. They began to build their own houses. There are three stages of contempt, which is again, not considering what you should. Number one, there's procrastination. Procrastination means you're wasting time. You're sitting. What happened in this stage, in verse number two, the people said the time is not come. So they procrastinated because they were waiting, bless you, on King Darius to send a letter giving them permission to build. But guess what? God had already given them permission to build. Hagar had to remind the people, God has already told you what to do. But you let a man stop you from doing what God gave you the green light to do. So you began to procrastinate. They said it's not time. How many today looking out at the communities and everything that's going on, knowing that our communities need the church, but we're still waiting on somebody. We're waiting on a leader. We're waiting on somebody that we trust. When God has given us the power to speak, the power to witness, the power to pray. Want to meet about everything else except meet to pray. (laughs) 
We procrastinate. Waiting on somebody to give us the permission to go. Waiting to follow somebody else. But God has empowered you to turn this world upside down. They said it's not time. Second stage in contempt is excuse making. It is not time became the excuse. Not only are we procrastinating and waiting now, it has become my excuse. It's not time because Darius has not sent the letter. That has become their excuse. But when you are talking to a God who has given you the go, how can you make an excuse to him when he says go? You know the ones who made excuses in the Bible when they tried to go before God, trying to give him a reason for why they couldn't do what God has commissioned them to do. Look back at Moses. Moses says, I can't speak. God says, I'm going to give you a speaker. Look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah says, I'm too young. God says, see not that I am a child. Look at Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number six. Isaiah says, I'm a man of unclean lips and I come from a people of unclean lips. But God sent a cherub to take a, a, a coal from off the altar and purify his lips. And then God says, who will go for me? Isaiah says, here am I. Send me. I'm trying to tell you is that when God has empowered you, there's no excuse to not do what God has empowered you to do. God is telling the people of Jerusalem, he's telling them, look at what I did for Nehemiah. Look at what I've done for you. I've given you, people have given you gold and silver and wood. And they've given you everything that you needed. And you let a man stop you from doing what God gave you the favor to carry out. Excuse making. When you procrastinate, you begin to make excuses. And when you're making excuses, you're trying to convince yourself of the lie that the devil is trying to sow into your mind. Third stage of contempt is self-centeredness. Ah, they said the time has not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. And God sent back a message, and I like it because he got sarcastic with him. He said, is it time for you to build your houses with your ceilings? You won't build my house. Is it time for you to build your house with ceilings? You can't live in a tent. You, you need a rooftop now. You need a porch. You need a swing out there on the tree. Is, is it time for you? What happens to us when we procrastinate, we begin to get lazy. When we get lazy, we make excuses for why we can't do what we actually can do. When we get lazy and we procrastinate and we make excuses, then we start thinking about me. I don't feel like it. And we'll do anything that we feel like doing. This pandemic showed us a lot about ourselves, didn't it? Oh, Lord. Some folk wasn't coming to worship, but they were going to concerts without masks. You'll do what you want to do. Yeah, when you become self-centered, you'll do what you want to do, but you're not thinking about how wretched it looks. Listen to what the people said. It's not time that the Lord's house should be built. You're self-centered if you say, I can't do something for the Lord. That's when contempt, that's when contempt is made perfect in your spirit. Because now, because you're focused on you and you've gotten lazy and you've wasted time, now you can't focus on God or God's purposes in your life. Ah, complacency breeds contempt. 
Secondly, you can never prosper focusing on the wrong house. The people had contempt for God. I believe in their heart, they, they really wanted to be God's people. They, they wanted to please God. But when you get in a place of contempt, your heart is changed to where you see only you. Then you begin to build your own house, your own kingdom. These people began to build their own houses, physical houses, with ceilings, while they continue to carry the excuse that it's not time to build God's house. And God, what he did was he stopped the productivity of the earth. God says, you eat, but you can't get full. You drink, but you're still thirsty. You got money, but you always need money. Oh, I've been there. When I made the most money in my secular career, I didn't have money because I wasn't doing right by God. Always something falling apart. Car. I knew it was something divine going on. Can't nobody have as much car trouble as I have. There's always something that needed money. When you're building your own kingdom, you cannot prosper. You may have moments in your life where you feel like you're on top of the world, but just as fast as you up here, you fall right back down. When we're focused on the wrong house, we cannot prosper. When you look at this building, you think that we have prospered. And when I say this, I don't want nobody to get offended. I want you to hear what I'm saying. I was installed at this church August the 3rd, 2014 as a pastor. Since then, and I'm not patting myself on the back, we had some strong leadership to get some things done. We have renovated the two front bathrooms, made them handicap accessible. We have torn this whole floor out, replaced it, expanded the choir stand, tore everything from the floor to the roof out in the back, and rebuilt it all up. We've got projector in the back. Uh, we got computer in the front. We've got online services. We've got radio services. We've got all of these things going on. Can I tell you that that is not the building that God is talking about building? See, the problem is when we focus on just this building, we can't be prosperous. We, we focus on this building and we think because we put so much work in this building, everybody ought to want to come to this building, right? This is not the church. We are the church. And this building is supposed to go out and focus on building God's house. If we were building the right house, and I believe God is calling us to, he's causing us to prosper as a people, but there's still more building that we have to do. If we were building God's house, we'd have to Bust this wall down and join with the fellowship hall. Have a bigger sanctuary, maybe balcony, because God's house is being built with people. We got a gorgeous building. I'm proud of it. Every time I walk in here, I feel good because of what y'all were able to accomplish and to pay for. But this is not the building we're supposed to be focused on. If God forbids a tornado comes and knocks this pretty building down, we still got a building to work on.
If at the fault lines of Alabama, the earth began to quake and the ground opened and swallow this building where we couldn't build on this land again, we still got work to do. We must focus on building the right house. Tell you what the right house is, is my last point. We must focus on God's house. Looking back at the text, God tells the people to build his temple. So then we've got to understand what God's temple actually represented. What did the temple represent? Was it just a building? Was it just a place of worship? No. God's temple represented God's presence among his people. And since Adam fell, God desired to dwell among his people. But something kept the holy God from communing with sinful man. That's why he said, your sin has separated you from me. God's temple represented God's presence are paving the way for God's presence to interact with his people. The temple represented reconciliation. And when I say reconciliation, it represented grace and mercy because the temple was ordained by God under law. This is how you atone for your sin. God didn't make another way for sin to be atoned for except blood be shed by the hands of priests at the temple. As long as there was no temple, there was no atonement because there was no obedience to God's law. That's why I challenge every person who is, is a non-believer of Jesus today. Even if you pick up the Old Testament, you can't change God's law. Jesus said, I didn't come to change God's law. He came to fulfill it. So the temple represented grace and mercy and paving the way for God's presence. Hey, God, 2 and 14, God says everything you're doing is unclean. Whole nation was out of whack because the temple was not there. Because there was no atonement for their sin. Because there was no atonement, God said, I don't care if you got zeal in your heart. And you really love me with all your emotion. But your hands are still unclean. The temple represented the cleansing of God's people. And we don't give that enough credit. Because having the cleansing, the atonement of God means you've got relationship with him. And so often we try to jump over that blessing to because I have a relationship, I got healing power, I got saving power, I got money, I got this, I got that. No, 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 no. You got relationship. That temple represented relationship. It represented Jehovah Nisi because when everybody else knew that that temple was there and the, the animals were being killed and the relationship between God and his people were restored, they knew they couldn't stop Israel. That temple was God my banner. It was a statement that God rules and reigns and this is his throne. focusing on the New Testament Hebrews 4 and 16 says let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need we have relationship with God because of Jesus Christ he has opened the door for us to approach God and be reconciled if you need to know what God's house is 
Let me give you a few more scriptures. John chapter number four in verses 20 through 24. Jesus is talking to a woman at the well. And she says, sir, I believe I perceive that you are a prophet. And she had a question and answer. Ask Jesus, didn't she? She said, our fathers worship in this mountain. And you say that Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me. The hour cometh where you shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the father. You worship what you don't know. We, work, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is. When the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. For the father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is not the temple that we're talking about building. Hallelujah. Let me give you a few more to clear it up. John 2, 19 through 21, Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, 40 and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But John says he spoke of the temple of his body. John 14, 16 through 18. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. If you still don't know what I'm talking about, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. You are the temple of God. Hallelujah. But then there's another temple. 1 Peter 2 and 5, you also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So if you want to answer the question, how do we build God's temple? How does building God's house look for us? Here, and I'm done, is the primary point of this, this, this message. Connecting with God. The temple was the place where God's people connected with him. In our personal lives, it is us seeking a connection and staying connected with him. In this temple, Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added. That's not a one and done scripture. That scripture doesn't say get baptized and then God will give you everything. Seek first. That's an everyday thing. Seek first the kingdom of God. Connect with him. In the evangelistic world, it's called reconciliation. God heart desires to dwell among his people. And if you put on God's heart through Jesus Christ, that's our primary objective. Not only do we seek to reside in his presence for ourselves, but we desire for other people to reside in the presence of God. To build God's house is to restore the lost back to him. It is past time to build God's house. church will focus on our evangelistic ministry telling somebody else about Jesus Christ we're building God's house at the end of the day he's not going to ask us what you do with this brick and mortar he's going to ask us what did you do with this temple 
What did you do to build my house? Maybe somebody who does not know Jesus. You can be a part of his house right now. We the church, we are called the body of Christ. And you can be a part of this body. If you'll do what Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You say, how? With the heart you believe, God takes your faith and makes you righteous. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. In other words, your confession grabs a hold of salvation. The doors of the church are open. They are always open. Coming up on this church anniversary, we're going to continue to have anniversaries. We got to build God's house. Maybe here, the Holy Spirit has pricked your heart to join with this ministry. We want you in the body of Christ first and foremost. Secondly, we would love to have you in our family. So we need workers. We need people who are willing. You may be here. You just need prayer. I invite you just to lift your hand. Amen. We want to acknowledge you. God knows what you need. If you're online, just say pray for me. Need personal prayer, you can stay with me or you can put a prayer request in our box in the front. Let us pray. God of grace, God of mercy, thank you for your word. Father God, we just come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you for the blood. Thank you, Father God, that you loved us so much that you sent your son to die on the cross for us. But he got up on the third day. And your word says the same spirit that raised up Jesus. He dwells in your believers. And he will raise us up at the last day. Thank you for your promises, Lord. Father God, we thank you for what we've been able to accomplish as a body. Thank you for what you blessed us to accomplish with this brick and mortar building. But Father, I ask you, Lord, that you would equip us, and that you would touch our hearts, that we may build on your house, adding to your kingdom. Because, Lord, you desire to dwell among your people. As sinful as we can be, you still desire to dwell among us and to show us your love. Let us be about your work, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, there are many who have asked for prayer this morning. Whether they raise their hands or not, Lord, you know what they need. Father, there's someone going to the doctor this week. And I'm praying, Lord God, that you would just touch them, Father. That you strengthen them. That you beat the doctor to their healing. As someone, Father God, who's dealing with sickness in their body right now. Father, I pray for healing. Father, there's someone who needs help in their home. Whether it be spouse, whether it be children whether it be divorce, whatever it may be, Lord, I pray that you help them, Lord. Someone that's lonely, someone depressed, someone struggling in any other way, Lord. Father, you got the answer to every problem. 
And I pray that you would search this house, that you would search this congregation. Father, even online, God, you know what they need, Father. And it's not by my prayer, but it's by your answer that the power comes. I pray that you answer prayer, Lord, even as we speak right now. God, there are those who are not with us right now, who are not able to speak for themselves. Laying in a bed or sitting on some couch in their home right now, Lord, especially those who are elders, Lord. Father, I ask that you see about them, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for that lost soul that needs to know you. I pray that you use your servant to lay out your word that they can understand. Father, that they be compelled to give their life to you right now. The Father, as we get ready to go to our various destinations, we know that you're able to keep us safe in your traveling grace. I pray that you will be with us. And Lord, be with us as we go this week. Now, Lord God, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest ruling about on each one of us from this time and forevermore. Let us all say amen. Amen. God bless you this week.